recording. All right, we're good. Now, no, I didn't mean to have that. I usually within two two lectures or something like that. All right, um, I want to finish off. We've been hammering this example for the last lecture or so. All right, uh, data is eight bits. This flash and data all depends upon what processor, you, what chip you pick. Okay, that's we went, we kind of went through this. All right. So for the flash for the 169P, how much memory do we have? What's the address space? How many K? Good guess. 64. Flash. And I don't mean Flash Gordon, I mean Flash. What I mean is, how much Flash do we have here? How much Flash is available to us? 16K. 16K? How much? 8, 16, 32, a meg. We have to know how much memory you have because we have to select a chip. You're going to go with 16. All right. Open up Studio. Did you pick a, a 169P? Go, go ahead. Go up. Pick your poison. Assembler. Okay. Go to 169P. Now, hold it. Right there. Click on 169. What does it say? 16. 16. All right. So 16 kilobytes. That's what it's telling you. What does it tell you next? What's the next one over? Data. Data. All right. So this is telling you that this is 16K. All right. So I've got 16K address space. Sixteen K. How many how many uh, address lines for sixteen K? Get out your calculators. Start doing two to the two to the twelve, two to the thirteen. Fourteen. So I've got fourteen address lines. All right, 14 address lines we're going to use. So basically what you're going to have is a, and what does this go from? From zero up to what? What's the last one? 13 what? Give me, give me the address. This is zero, 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 zero. What's the final address in hex? F. That's your exam grade. No, just kidding. Come on. F, F, U, or F, U, or just, <laughs> come on. Come on, give me his address. Come on. You got to get this down. All right. Take six, all right, go, go into your little calculators, all right? We need to know what's the final address. 4,000. 4,000? How do you get 4,000? So what do you take? One less, one less than that. So take one less than that and convert it to hex. Three. That's it. That's the final address space in hex. All right? Could you explain that? Okay. Here's how you... Go ahead. All right. So you take the... Uh, 16K. You take the 16K, you convert it to hex, and then... Subtract one. Subtract and then just look at it. So, all right, so, all right, give me 16K. What did you get for hex? 4,000, right? So then you take 4,000, take 4, subtract one off. What do you got? Three. Take 3999, 
convert that to hex. What do you get? Oh, 4,000 was hex. I'm sorry. So subtract one off it. What do you get? 3FFF. So you, you, you subtract one, and that's where, you get, that's where you get that address space. All right. So we have all of these guys sitting here all the way down to here. Okay? That's, that's what our, our flash is. Yes? 16 bit what? We calculated the address space is 16K. K. But if it's 16K total, isn't that 8K deep? Well, what's the address space? Well, yeah, but if it's 16 bits wide and 16K total, then it can only be. Well, it, it depends on what you call what's the address space. Is it is it 16K address space or 16K total? 16K bytes of RAM, and of, of flash. Let's see what you got here. Yeah. This is the 169P? Yeah. Oh. So it's 8K. 8K deep. 16K 8K deep. Wide. Very good. You're right. Right, right, right. All right, so if it's 16K, this is the total, this is the total bytes that you have. All right, so that's, so what do we have now? So if it's 16K, that's not the address line. It's my mistake. So 16K is the total number of bytes in here, okay? So 8K address space. All right, so if we have 16K total, thank you, very good. All right, so we're going to have to change this. All right, so if we have... <sighs> 16K total, so that gives me 8K address, right? So if it's 8K address, all right, so let's get 8K address. What's the final address that's going to go down here? So you're going to have 8K, convert that to hex, convert it to hex, 2,000, subtract 1, 1F, F, F. So the final address down here is 1F, F, F. Very good. The manual never lies. Very good. So that... I'm sorry. Yeah. Could I ask, like, how we got from 16K, like, how do we use the 16th bit of, like, wide to get to the 8K address? All right, well, you got 16 kilobytes, okay, 16K, all right? This is a 16-bit wide, all right? So how many bytes are in 16... Two, right? So you take 16K divided by two. You, you take this and you divide it by two. Because you're, you're, you're looking at bytes here. So the bytes would be broken up like that. Okay? All right. Data memory. How much data memory do we have? 8-bit. How many bytes? If you look on your 169P, what does it say under data? 1024, all right, so it's 1K. So here we have 1K. What's the address? What are we addressing up to? How much? So you take, you take your 1024, convert it to hex, subtract 1, what do you get? 3FF, okay? 3FF. All right, so that gives me that. Now, this data is broken up into several parts. We're going to have registers. So we're going to have register R0, 
all the way down to R31. So those memory locations in SRAM are set up for that. Then we're going to have a set of what are called S, I think it's special SPRs, special special purpose registers. No, it's yeah. These are you're going to have a whole bunch of I/O. It's going to be set up. You're going to have a whole bunch of special function registers. I think they use SFR. I think it's SFR. Special function registers. In there, you're going to have all these registers are setting up like uh, my stack. My timers, uh, all my I.O. stuff gets all set up in here. We'll look at this, all right? Then the rest of this is for data, okay? And we'll show you how to break this stuff up. If we take this example that we had, I think I want to uh, stop debugging. So here we're just going to add some numbers and store it. Again, here's my flash here, and that's all sitting in here. So what we have... So again, we have 0, 5, E2. Zero, 5 sits there. The E2 sits there. What's the next one? 1, 4, uh, E3, and so on. Okay? So that's the actual machine code that's sitting down in Flash. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some numbers, add them together, and we're going to write them to memory over here, okay? So if we go down and look, run this, just loading up R17, R18, we add them together, load up another uh, 11 decimal in there, add it. Now what we want to do is store it. STS is to store to SRAM, all right? That is storing to SRAM. LDI is load immediate. I'm just loading a number into a register, I'm, and then I'm just adding them together. So here I have STS0101, the result of R16. The addition of the 34 to the 31 and the 11 decimal is going to give you a 95 in hex. We're going to store that at location 0101, okay? That's where that guy's going to go. So if we now look, and the reason I use this here, jump here again, <clears throat> is that if you don't do this, it shuts this memory down. You don't see it, all right? So what this is basically doing is this is just like looping right here, all right? It's just looping there. So it's just so you don't shut these windows. Because the, when the program terminates, it just shuts these windows down, okay? All right, and you see the program counter is all the way up at 9. And if we go over and look, we go to, well, you can look at your registers. Let's look at IRAM. And there you see it starts at 0, 1, 0, 0. That's the first location here. And then we have 0, 1, 0, 1. The 9, 5 hex is stored right there. Okay? So that's how I store something into, uh, into SRAM. All right? Make sense? Okay. All right, now, take this one and make it a zero. Take that one and make it a zero. Recompile, rebuild it. Where is it going to go? When I do an STS 0001, where's it going? It's going to SRAM, right? It's going to go over there to the, to the data. 
Where is it going to store it at? What memory location? Here's zero, zero, zero here. Where is it going to store it? Right, in, right into there. And what register is associated with zero, 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 0001? R0 is located with 0000, zero, 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 zero R1. Watch what happens. So run it, and let's see what happens. Okay, now, over here, if you look up here, it defaults to 0100. Zero, zero, zero. It defaults, when you come up, to that memory location right there. It defaults to that. If I want to go look somewhere else, I have to change that number. Change that number over here to zero. Let's go to, just change the one to a zero. And notice what you see here. Why is the 9.5 sitting right there? Because that's where we told it to store it. Here's memory location zero, zero. Here's zero, one. So the 9.5 is now not stored here. And store it up where R1 is, up here. It has 9.5 sitting in. And if you go over and look, look at register R01. What's in it? 9.5. Okay. Where did the 3 1 come from here? That's R18. If you look, R0, R1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's R18. It has the 3 1 in it. R18. Yeah? What are those, uh, like, data 0012 mean to the left? Oh, it's just telling you. It's just telling you that you're in data. You're at this memory. If you go back here, if I go back to here and go to Flash, notice it says PROG. What's that stand for? What is all this? What's the Flash? It's program. Yeah, that's affiliated with program space. Okay. Oh, uh, let me think. Where was, um, let's change this to, I think it's 5E. Change it to 5E. All three neurons are firing away here, all right? They're not fighting each other today, okay? 5E. Stop the debugging. There's flash. Now what I want you to do is to go to go to IRAM. And again, once you click on IRAM, it defaults to this, which is usually your data space. All right. It doesn't default to what these special function registers are and your and your other registers in there. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's run it. All right, now. And now we're going to go to memory location. You see that zero 05 right there? Notice what you see up here at the stack pointer. The last memory location, these special function registers here. I keep forgetting my pen.
inside of this I.O. and these special function registers, there's something called SP, stack pointer. There's a stack pointer high, and there's a stack pointer low. And the 0, 5, 0, 0, 5 e is part of the stack pointer. So I just, I, what I'm showing you is I'm, I've did, I just written into the special function registers, okay? You can write into them. You have to be real careful about them. That's why you usually want to start off with, if you're going to write data, you want to write them in here for this place. Yeah. That varies. It varies up upon the chip that you have. Like th this here, is that where you're, this space here? This varies. Right. This goes down to 1F, that's correct. It goes to 0, 0, 1F. And then this starts in here. Well, there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes in here. This could be 64, you know. There's a whole, this varies upon what chip you have. All right, that, it depends on how much, uh, how much I.O. space I can address. You know, how many I.O. ports that I have, how many timers I have. Some, some like the, the 169P has three timers on it, so there's going to be three registers in here that are going to be setting up those timers and stuff. Yeah. Is that 95 just completely lost then because of the pointer displays that instead? The 95 is lost? R16 has 95 in it, and you're storing it in 005E, right? Right. Into Never Never Land. <laughs> Where did the 9-5 go? If you look at, okay. R16 has 9-5 in it. Where did the 9 go? It truncates it off. We'll, we'll get to that. This is a very good point. The, the, stack, the stack pointer is typically a 16-bit pointer. It's broken up into high and low, SPH and SPL. So, so the higher order byte goes to the higher order address. The lower order byte goes to the lower order address. Higher order byte goes to the higher order address. This is a 16-bit stack pointer. All right. We'll get to this in Chapter 2. All right, it's just the way it's split up. All right. All right, so we're done with this guy. Now let me get my other. All right, so again, what we're looking at, gang, and we'll get to this. In, in the, I, I posted up the uh, Chapter 1 and 2 slides. They're all posted up under the lecture material because really we're, we're, we're investigating what's going on here and here. All right, we won't play so much with here, all right? But what you have, you have your, your CPU, which is comprised of your program counter, the instruction decoder, the arithmetic logic unit. You have uh, an oscillator, a free-running oscillator out there. You've had an interrupt units. We have I.O. ports. You can have other peripherals, like on the 169, uh, on a butterfly board. Other peripherals are the joystick, the liquid crystal display, we have a set of timers that are going to be in there that we can use to generate pulse width modulated signals. You can have EEPROM for other data, and then you have that RAM is what we're talking about right here. All right. So what we're investigating right now is what's going on here and what's going on here. Okay. So that's the basic idea. So we just ran some code, program counter, and you just keep it, it keeps chugging, keeps taking each piece of code. Increments the program counter, decodes that instruction, does whatever it has to do. And that's basically the idea. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're peeling off the code out of flash here. Okay? And that's, ex that's what's sitting in here. This is the flash that we're talking about. All right? All right. Now, when you go and you assemble something, all right, if you look up, well, 
what we're basically doing is we're taking our assembly language code, you run it through what's called an assembler, and that creates the machine language stuff that goes into flash memory. Okay? So that stuff goes into flash. So basically what you have is we're working in the editor at the high level. You then assemble the program and it creates these files for you. All right, there's an object file, there's a hex file, and if you look at it, when, we go, when I go up here on the Solutions Explorer, you'll see them right there. There's the hex file, there's the LSS file that has uh, the, the uh, assembly and the op codes in it. Uh, you have this map file, you have an object file, all right? So it creates, these things are all created out of there. All right, what gets, you can download to the EPROMs, the AVRs, EPROM, and to Flash. What gets downloaded into Flash, which is over in here, are all the hex op codes. So that's what we're downloading. So when we go from editing, assembling, the hex file gets sent into Flash. Okay, so that's what goes there. Nothing goes into data. Nothing goes into here until you write to it. You have to write to that stuff. All right? Make them sense? So let's remember, you've got separate memories here. If you're working with like an 8086 and Intel processor, it mixes these two together. You have basically one, one large set of RAM that you write code and data into. The nice thing about the AVRs is they force you to separate that out. We'll show you how to take that. Well, we already did. We, we've taken something from here and written it into here. Okay. And we also had written some things into the registers. Now, you saw me when I did an STS-0001, we had written into R1 that 9.5. Typically, you don't want to do that. The, the, the general purpose registers are set up to write to the registers. In the end, it's going to end up in here. But you really, you don't want to write to any of this stuff here. You want to write all your data starting at 0100 and place data in there. We will be writing stuff in here later, but you don't want to write data in here. All your timers, your analog to digital converter stuff, all that sits in here. So you kind of want to stay away from writing stuff in there. So you want to write your data basically down in there. Okay? All right. Uh, organizing is basically how I want to organize my code. Uh, we'll get a little bit, we'll get to this a little bit later. Basically, what you want to do is in some cases over in here, depending upon a chip, they may have boot stuff sitting down in here, which is all your, your, your code. When you turn a chip on, how it knows to set everything up. You may want to start skipping around instead of writing, write to, instead of writing to memory location zero, you may want to write to memory location seven. So what this does is if I org zero and I load this in, I will have my op code for LDI, uh, R16025, that's the opcode. That will go right into me that flash member location zero. <clears throat> if I then do an org zero seven hex, it then skips all these other memory locations and starts writing the opcodes for these commands start getting written down here. In some cases in flash memory, you may have to avoid certain spots in here. All right, and, it, and in, the, in the manual, it'll tell you what to avoid. And that's, uh, that's what we can use to get around it. We'll get into this a little bit later when we get to Chapter 2 and 3. So that org 0 puts me right at this memory location. So the opcode for that goes right there. <clears throat> the other ones start right there. All right, and that's just jumping around. It. All right, now, <clears throat> I, don't, we don't, I don't think we need to run this. You ran this in lab, right, this program? All right, so basically what we did was we just loaded some things. We added them together. We decremented them, and I showed you this. What this branch not equal to does is you're decrementing R18. Whoops. You're decrementing R18, and uh, a branch, if, as long as R18 remains non-zero, we're going to branch on a not equal to. We're going to take whatever the program counter is, subtract two from it, and that's just going to route me right back to here. So... When I, when, I, when I branch not equal program counter minus 1, it'll put me here. When I broke branch on the program counter minus 2, it puts me up here. All right, so it's incrementing up. Yeah? So, uh, E-R-M-E, uh, this instruction, what does it compare, compare to 1? It, it, okay, anytime you're going to do a branch not equal, what it does is it looks up 
at what's called the status register here. Branch not equal to zero. Okay, what this does here, you know what? Let's, hey, what the heck? We, we have the video game in front of us, we might as well run it. All right, let's take this, let's show you exactly what it does. That's what I love about having the Studio 6 in here. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. All right, so let's watch and see what happens here. What I want you to keep an eye on is going to be this status register. All right, the status register basically says, okay, Whatever my last operation was, if there's a zero result, the Z flag will get set high. If I was doing an addition or subtraction and I needed a carry, the carry flag will get set. The status register basically has its, its, these bits in it to basically, we'll show you what happens, all right? It does. What what this? Let me here. Let, let's. It's better to see it. <laughs> I'll, I'll then then we'll talk. All right. So now what we're doing is just watch the program counter is now set at four. Okay. The program counter is at four. When I execute this command, now what the, what this is going to do? Branch not equal to zero. That's what it's going to do. If it is equal to zero, this will fall out. Now. The result of decrementing R18, let's take a look at R18. So let's go over to here. Let me look at my registers, or I can look at them right here. Look at R18. What does R18 have in it? A 3. It started at 4, right? We started at R18 at 4. We then added those two numbers together. We decremented R18 to 3, okay? Is, is 3 equal to 0? No. Branch not equal. Program counter is going to go back. So this program counter is now going to go so that program counter is sitting at 4 now. When I execute this command, what's going to be the value that's going to be up in here? 2. Because I'm going to take the contents of the program counter, subtract 2 from it, so now I'm going to be sitting at 2. And there you go. You can see it's a 2, and the, since the program was decremented by 2, it's going to go point to that instruction again. We're going to go down. We're going to just do some addition. Now look at, the, no, look at R18. What's R18 equal to? 2. It went from 3 to 2. We decremented it down. Now we went through, hold on, I'll get to you. What is R18 equal to now? Zero. Look at the, look at the Z flag here. So the last, we, we have a zero result. What's now going to happen here? This is no longer true. It now falls out. <clears throat> Talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. Hold on. <laughs> so that's why you'll see it fall out now, because that is not true. All right? We had a zero result. Now, go ahead. Whatever the last operation that performed some kind of The zero flag gets set on, the zero flag can get set on this operation, the zero flag can get set on this operation. You have to specifically put your test in where you want it, where you want to test it at. Yeah. So that zero flag will remain zero until there's some other operation that affects the zero flag, the status register. You had your hand up. Yeah, DEC decrements by one. 
It's automatic, yeah. What's going on here is basically when you see this highlighted in red, that was the last one that has changed. And what the other ones you'll see, like the other S, V, and N, when they're, when they're highlighted around it, they have not changed. A flag has something inside the register has changed, but the other bits have not changed. That's what that does. So you look at, that was the last bit that was changed in there. Yeah. You'll see the same thing when we get to simulating I.O. ports, too. Capiche? All right? Everybody good? All right. All right. So we can get back to here. All right. So again, just a review. You, you, you ran this in lab. We went through it, just showing you where flash is. <clears throat> oh. And uh, this was the, uh, we looked at the disassemble file. It just shows you that there's the instruction and there's the op codes for it. Okay. And you went through all this, I don't think. Yeah. Now, just a word to the wise. And it's just so you know how to go from op codes to instruction. I could give you this flash, and I could ask you to reconstruct the assembly code from it. What would you do? You would go to this website, and you would start looking up. All right, where's the E205? What does that mean? You know what I mean? So you can work your way back and forth. All right. The reason I would ask you to do that is just to make sure that you understand what the opcode, each opcode has a very specific individual command associated with it. All right. Instruction. All right. So that was just how to look up that guy. All right. And then we did, we looked at the LSS file. The beautiful thing about this is when you're writing really tight code, it can show you what happened to all the registers, how many times that they were modified. So when you go into Solutions Explorer, you can look at that LSS file, and it gives you a lot of, a, 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 a plethora, a horn of plenty as far as the information that's what's going on with your code, all right? And it's showing you how many times the registers were used, how many additions you did. You know, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to have around, all right? So again, here is my op codes. Here's where they go into memory, all right? That's where they sit in flash. So that, all that's sitting over here in flash, in flash. Each one of those instructions gets stored in flash. Now, in flash, you'll see a lot of these FFs all over the place. That's just, that's just how the, the flash is in the initialized. Some of them are initialized to zero. Some are initialized to, to all ones. It's just the way that, you know, that, that, that Atmel decided to do it. It's very important to note that this and most processors use what's called the little endian approach. Lower order bytes go to lower order addresses. Higher order bytes go to higher order addresses. The lower order byte in this case, EA13, the EA as it's written here, this is the most significant byte, this is the least significant byte. So the EA13, the 13 will go to the lower order address. It will go to the lower order address. The EA is the higher order byte. That goes to the higher order address. Okay? So just most processors follow that convention. Okay? The little Indian convention. All right. We looked at the registry. So here, if I went up and I just clicked on memory, went to data registers, you can see the numbers that we were putting in there, DAA. The one three, and all right. So that's basically looking at the uh, at how things are set up. There's two types of architectures that are pretty much out there, and actually, this is real. Whoop, the the von Neumann, which is a traditional architecture, versus what we call Harvard architecture. We're working on the Atmel series with the Harvard ar architecture. The uh, the difference between the two is usually in the von Neumann architecture, you'll any CPU. You must have three buses that are out there, all right? I need an address bus to address things. I will need 
a data bus because I'm going to be having data coming in and out. And then I need a control bus to basically control whether I'm going to write something to memory or I'm going to write or read something to an I.O. or a peripheral. So I have to control where things are going to go to. All right? I have to control that. You have the same thing in this von Neumann architecture. So you have, you could have um, uh, data memory, code memory, and you have these buses. All right? The, uh, there's a big difference between these two. They, they, what, what they basically, if you think about it, I go, my program counter goes to here. What happens next after the program counter goes and points to a piece of code in Flash? What happens to that? that what happens to these hex numbers? Where do they go? They go into the instruction decoder to get decoded. All right? That's where it's going to go. All right? So basically, now, so once I go to the instruction decoder, it decodes it. What then happens? So I, I fetch the instruction. I then... Decode the instruction, and then once you decode it, what do you do next? I execute the instruction. Then what do you do? Program counter gets incremented. What do we do then? You go through this cycle. How many times am I fetching? So now when I'm fetching and I'm, and I'm decoding and I'm executing, the processor is basically it's tied up. It would be nice, the big difference between a traditional, that's a traditional way of doing things. Fetch, decode, execute. As you're decoding and executing, wouldn't it be nice to be able to go fetch the other instructions so it's ready? That's the big difference between the von Neumann and the Harvard architecture. And basically what you need is another, see here, this bus, these buses are all really the same buses on both sides, whether you're going from one memory to another. Actually, I think I have a better slide that's going to show it. Well, this is just, you can, you can read this stuff, but here's, here's how it actually works. And the best way is to, in a, in a Harvard architecture, you really have, you, you have a set of four buses that are going to be set up now. You're going to have a bus that goes from the CPU to data memory, another bus that takes data back from out of, the, out of memory back into the uh, CPU. You have another set of buses that can go to code memory, and another set of buses that can go that are attached. So really, what you do is you add more buses that are on there. So here's the idea. In the old architecture, let's say I have, here's my program memory. Here's my CPU. So now what we're going to do is we go and we get an instruction. It comes in. We fetched it. We then execute it. And then we get the next one. Execute. Get the next one. So you're, you're basically going in this linear fashion here. What's nice is when you're doing pipelining is the instruction comes in. As I now go over to execute this, I fetch the next one. That's the beauty about having the extra buses. I can go out and grab that stuff. And that's basically what you're doing. Is This is what is called a pipelining architecture. It allows me to, not only as I'm executing something, I can then fetch something else. Now, what's called, now, uh, typically in the 8086 series, what you have is what's called a bus interface unit and an instruction pipeline and then an execution unit. So basically what as you're doing is, as my CPU is now decoding and, and, and executing an instruction, there's another processor that sits out there that does what's called the bus interface unit. What you basically have is another little set of memory that as the CPU is doing something, this bus interface has, in, in the 8086, there's six other little registers where the fetched instructions are now getting loaded into. As the, as the CPU is sitting there chugging along, this bus interface unit is fetching, fetching. And that's all it does. It doesn't execute anything. It just goes out and grabs, grabs, grabs. So it's fetching that stuff. So that's what's happening. The old one, fetch, execute, fetch, execute. I, I forgot to put the code in there. But as you, when, when you do the pipelining one, you could be fetching. You're fetching as, as this guy's executing. So that's the beauty about it. And this, you know, this is actually the, the pipeline architecture in the 8086. The, uh, in the 8086, you have basically 20-bit address lines. 16-bit data lines, okay? There's a, uh, a, an address generator. Now, 
What happens here is the left-hand side over here is the CPU. You have a set of general purpose registers, which are uh, A, B, C, D registers. You have a base pointer, destination index, source index, stack pointer. This is all the CPU over here. Memory sits way out here, so my memory's sitting out here, so I can address the memory and I can get data, and it's a 16-bit. Here's my point. This right hand, the left-hand side of this dash line is the CPU. The right-hand side is the bus interface unit. What I'm doing here is it's allowing me to go out to memory and grab instructions and put them into this instruction queue. So as the CPU is executing an instruction here, I have all these other instructions are already set, ready to go. They've already been fetched. All I got to do now is send them into the processor. That's the beauty. That's really the, the beauty of pipelining. Okay. Till you, till the CPU's ready. Give me it now. Give me it now. Give me it now. So you've already got them fetched, and that's the whole idea. So you have this instruction queue. Now it varies processor to processor how long that queue is. That's that's how that, that's the bottom line. You're you're no longer on this fetch, decode, execute. As I'm decoding and executing, what's happening? The other ones are getting fetched. You're you're pulling them in. All right. All right. Two minutes left. All right. So now on to the next. All right. This is basically we're, we're done. <laughs> we're done with chapter zero. <laughs> Finally. All right. This is basically chapter two stuff. We're going to get into. Uh, well, we already. What's the difference between a microcomputer and a and a and a, and a, and a microcontroller? You got everything on it. Yeah, it's all on board. All right. The other, the, the old, the other stuff is basically. Yeah, you know the difference already. So here we're gonna. This is where we, we're now going to really get into what these data spaces are. All right. The memory and the flash. Uh, we'll look at the CPU registers. We're going to use the X, Y, and Z registers, what's called indirect addressing, and to access data and program space above 64K. All right. All right, we're going to use these addressing modes to specify the operands for instructions, load instructions. We've done some of this already. Add instructions, subtract instructions, and stuff like that. Beat Navy. Have a good week.